Good morning, everyone. We're uh, continuing this morning with our uh, look at Psalm 37. We've divided it into three parts, uh, and we're going to start this morning looking at verse 27. Uh, and again, just a reminder to you as well, we're uh, planning to go be back in church on the 23rd of August uh, for our first service together, and we're getting ready for that uh, and looking forward to it. Uh, and just also a reminder that if for any reason you are not able to come out to that service uh, and if you are wanting to stay at home we hope to be able to make that available online um, so please do watch out for that we'll give you more information uh, in the days to come uh, and particularly at the beginning of next week we'll be giving you a lot more information about what to expect when you return to church. We'll read from Psalm 37 uh, and the last uh, few verses beginning at verse 27. Turn away from evil and do good, so shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints, they are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart, his steps do not slip. The wicked watches for the righteous and seeks to put him to death. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he's brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. I have seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree but he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Though I sought him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Psalm begins that section by encouraging us to turn away from evil and do good. But what does that mean? What does that actually look like? To turn away from evil, to reject everything that is evil and to instead do good. And is it even possible for us as sinful human beings? What does righteousness really look like? Well, he gives us an idea of what, what it might look like uh, to be righteous. One is to love justice in the way that God loves justice. Caring for people without favoritism. Caring for the poor and the oppressed and the, the, the widow and the fatherless and the people who... Uh, constantly throughout the Old Testament are the object of God's care. Caring about uh, inequality in society, racial or social or any other kind of inequality that exists. And caring about those who are afflicted by that. So loving justice is important if we're going to live this righteous life. Speaking wisdom, wisdom from God is important. Uh, that's part of being righteous. It says the mouth of the righteous utters wisdom and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. This righteous wisdom is biblical wisdom. It's wisdom from God. Uh, wisdom that God imparts to us through his word and by his spirit in our hearts. And then it's about waiting on the Lord in times when evil prospers. Even when all around us it seems that people who do the wrong things are succeeding while those who do the right things uh, are, are getting oppressed or abandoned or laid low. Still we hold on to God. And when we hold on to God we know that we hold on to the one who is going to bring all things uh, under his feet. Who is going to bring 
about a new heaven, a new earth, who's going to bring an end to injustice and wickedness and evil in the world. And the rest of the psalm focuses on that. The result of wickedness is that there is no future for it. There's just no future in it. Uh, it's like investing in a bad company. There will be no future in it. However prosperous it might appear on the outside, however successful it might appear on the outside, however uh, much it appears to get you everything that you might want, eventually evil, wickedness will fail. There's no future in it. But the results of righteousness, justice, wisdom, peace are a secure future. Why is that the case? Well, it's not because of what we do. It's not because we do good things or don't do bad things that we are secured this future. It's because of who we trust. And the rest of the psalm makes that clear, particularly the last couple of verses. It's because we take refuge in God. It's because we trust in him that our future is secure. It's because not of what we do for him, but of what he has done for us in Christ. That's what makes our future secure. And turning away from evil and turning towards righteousness is actually a very simple thing to do because all it means is turning away from self and trusting in Christ and in all that he has done for us it means taking off and putting away the evil that's in our hearts in our minds in our lips and putting on his righteousness that he freely offers to us by faith in him that's what turning away from evil to do good looks like. And when we've done that, <clears throat> then these last couple of verses describe us. I'm going to read to you Sam, the, the last two verses, verses 39 and 40 of this psalm. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, change the, the, the pronoun. So it's going to be in the first person. Uh, and I want you to listen to these words, verses 39 and 40 of, of Psalm 37. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is my stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps me and delivers me. He delivers me from the wicked and saves me because I take refuge in him. May that be the case for you today. You're righteous in Christ. You've taken refuge in him. This is you today. God bless.